Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. For today's box opening, we've got another March of the Machine Collector Booster Box. This comes from a different case than our previous one, so we've got about the same odds of potentially pulling a serialized card out of this one as we did before. Um, maybe even a little bit less uh, because we are effectively taking uh, another or rolling the dice once again. Um, so let's go ahead and crack this thing open, see what these 12 packs have in store for us. Um, that's a little interesting. This one has a little pink stripe on it. Don't know what that means. We'll open that one first. How about that? Um, and let's see what kind of value we can find. So I'm just going to go ahead and put them all over here in the corner. Um, they are super shiny packs. Um, I'm not going to use any pull tabs or anything like that because of the potential of pulling a serialized card. I'm just going to be very careful. Open them up here. And we'll do a comparative analysis of this box to the first one that I opened up on the channel last week. All right, so this one starts off with a Volcanic Spite, followed by a Bola Singer, excuse me, Slinger, Preening Champion, Sunder the Gateway with a Bonded Herd Beast. Then we see a Sculpted Perfection with a Nizumi Freewheeler. Then we've got ourselves a Full Art Mountain. Followed by a Sunfall from the main set as our rare. Then we're going to see a Boon Bringer Valkyrie as a rare from Commander. Then a Bitterthorn Nissus Animus uh, coming in from Commander. Sorry, the other one was not from Commander. Uh, then we get a Valakut Keeper of the Flame with a Zada Hedron Grinder coming in an Etch Foil. And then we're going to see a Pile On coming in as an Extended Art Rare with a Yorion Sky Nomad coming in uh, as a foil, uh, just a regular foil, not a halo foil. And we have a Knight Monk in the back. So maybe we'll do our piles like that. Guess we'll see. Yeah, I'll just put all those rares there. And uh, we'll definitely be tracking all the Mythics. Um, the prices you'll see on the screen is I'm gonna put up everything beyond the basic land uh, from a price perspective. Um, using uh, as close to video release days market prices. So this way you're in the know. So we got a port tent tracker here, followed by an Icor drinker. Then we're going to see a Sabia Cryptomancer with a coming in hot. Then we see an Order of the Mirror, an Oracle of Tragedy, Norn's Inquisitor, followed by a Full Art Forest. And if I can get the focus just right, there we go. Polychronos Reborn as our rare, followed by a Breach in the Multiverse as an extended art non-foil. Then we're going to see a Dark Steel Splicer coming in from the Commander set. There we go. I'm not sure what's taking up the focus today. Then we get a Dina Soul Steeper coming in from the Mist or the uh, Universal <laughs> from the Multiverse Legends. I keep wanting to say Mystical Archives because of course that's where this is coming from. And then we've got Quenda Pride Ephemerif coming in as an uncommon etched foil with a Zamone and Dina Mythic coming in uh, from the main set as a showcase card. Uh, don't be confused by that one over there. That is from the Multiverse Legends. This is a showcase card. Uh, and then we are going to see an um Umori the Collector coming in from the uh, Multiverse Legends with a Phyrexian and an Incubator. There's a lot going on here. The fact that those two cards can have the exact same frame and actually come, one comes from the main set and one comes from the, uh, the bonus sheet or the uh, Multiverse Legends is just a little bit weird. All right, so this one's got a Tranquil Cove followed by a Karsus Depth Guard. Then we've got an Infected Defector with a Vanquish the Weak, an Overgrown Pest, a Ramasonian Greatsword, Followed by an invasion of Eldraine with Full Art Island. And then we're going to see a Guardian of Jiapur coming in as our rare from the main set. Then we're going to see Errant and Giada coming in as another showcase non-foil card. Followed by Liliana's Talent from Commander. And then we're going to see Wrath Weatherlight Stalwart. Followed by an Agar the Freezing Flame in Etched Foil. And we are going to see a Halo Foil, the Great Synthesis here. However, that's backwards. So it is, whoa, it is a serialized Jenga Taxis here. 
That was a little interesting. Okay, so we got number 447 out of 500. That is amazing, and I am just going to immediately put that down. I was not expecting to see your serialized card. I did not have any sleeves ready. So we got a Ceram Senior Edificer coming in uh, with a Phyrexian and an Incubator in the back. Uh, I don't even care where that goes. Uh, bear with me for one second while I get a sleeve. All right, so there we go. Now he's fully sleeved. So this is artwork specific to this card. Um, so there's only 500 cards with this particular image on it. That is just downright awesome and amazing. Fantastic. All right, uh, so that was the, what, third pack in? Second pack in? Fantastic. Let's see what else we can find. Uh, I don't think you can pull two serialized cards in a box. Um, or at least I highly doubt it. I would imagine that the track printing and packing would not allow for that. But if we do see another backwards card, that'll be awesome. All right, so we got ourselves a Rugged Highlands here, followed by a War Historian, an Etched Familiar. Then we've got a Regular Plains. Still not a fan of uh, basic lands being in there. Then we got a Protocol Knight, followed by a Glistening Deluge. An invasion of Rin with a full art planes. And then we're going to see a Yargul and Multani coming in as our rare with a Nahiri's Warcrafting in non foil. Death's Greeter's Champion coming in from Commander. And then we got a Timurit chosen from Death in regular foil. And then we've got a Wrath Weatherlight Stalwart coming in and etched with an Inga and a Sika coming in in the showcase frame. Followed by Ayara, first of Lockwing, coming in as an etched foil uh, from the Multiverse Legends subset. Very cool to see that. And then we get a dinosaur and a treasure in the back. I was still thrown by this one, right? So seeing this in Halo, I was like, oh, cool, we're going to get a Halo foil, uh, right? Uh, you know, I think I've, I think you're probably going to get two to two to four per box. Uh, no, did, had no idea that that was going to be a serialized card. Uh, so that is awesome. And if you're going to get a serialized card, you want one of the five from the main set, not necessarily the ones from the Multiverse Legends, um, just simply because there are so many Multiverse Legends uh, cards and they have the exact same artwork. So in this case, right, we get something truly special. So we got a Placid Rotten Tail, followed by a Beamtown Beanstalk, a Meeting of the Minds. Then we're going to see a Nizumi Informant, followed by a Swiftwater Cliffs. A Corruption of Tawashi. Then we're going to see a Copper Host Crusher, followed by a regular or a full art island. Then we're going to see Progenitor Exarch coming in as our rare from the main set, followed by an Ozolith, the Shattered Spire, coming in an extended art. Very cool. Then we get ourselves an Ortheon Hero of Lava Brink coming in with a Jury Master of Review, followed by Ingarun Eyes in Etch. Then we're going to see a C double coming in an extended art with a Gore Claw uh, Terror of Calcisma coming in in just regular foil. And then we get a slightly damaged Phyrexian uh, token here. We've got some smudging going on down there with an incubator on the other side. Fantastic. Don't know why these packs are so hard to open, but that's okay. I guess they keep the uh, serialized cards in. So we got a Crystal Carapace, followed by an Alabaster Host Intercessor, Seed of Hope. Then we've got an Assimilate Essence, followed by Bloodfell Caves, Surge of Salvation, good uncommon. Then we got a Sun Blessed Guardian with a Full Art Plains. Then we're going to see an Infernal Sovereign coming in. This is going to be a Mythic uh, from the Commander set, currently valued over a dollar in regular frame. And then you're going to see an Inga and a Sika in Showcase Non-Foil with a Path of the Animus coming in from Commander in Extended Art with a Yargle Glutton of Urborg in Foil. And we are going to see another Halo here, uh, but it is just Raph Weatherlight Stalwart uh, coming in uh, as an uncommon Halo Foil, so not uh, serialized. Then we get a 
uh, Extended Art Sunfall in Foil with an Aramixis Slumbering Isle coming in in Etch Foil. Picked one of these up, I think, in our last box. Very cool. And then a Phyrexian Incubator in the back. So I've just got piles all over the place at this point. The uh, Gin Cataxis really threw me for a loop uh, as far as that one being a Halo Foil serialized card. All right, so we're going to see an Urn of Godfire, followed by an Atraxa's Fall, then an Etched Host Doombringer with a Furtive Analyst, a War Trained Slasher, a Joyful, yeah, Joyful Storm Sculptor, and then we're going to see an Invasion of Pyrea, Pyrula, uh, with a Forest, and then we're going to see an Invasion of, I'll turn it sideways so you all can read it, an Invasion of Fiora as our rare. Then we're going to see a Dusk Legion Duelist in uh, Extended Art Non-Foil with an Ikor uh, Exiler coming in from Commander. And then we're going to see Zada Hedron Grinder coming in in Foil from the uh, Multiverse Legends. Then a Dina Soul Steeper in Etched with a Blood Feather Phoenix Extended Art uh, Foil Rare with a Tesa Karlov coming in uh, in foil. And then we've got another Phyrexian Incubator. Tons of those. This guy's just got his own pile. I don't even know why. And I was tracking Mythics there for a little bit, and then I just kind of like lost track. But don't worry, we cover all of that in the MTG box analysis at the end. Don't do this at home. There we go. Like, I want to be the first person on YouTube to get two serialized cards in a box, but I also don't want to be the first person on YouTube to uh, cut a card. All right, so we get a Ferdid's Favor. Then we get Ren's Resolve, Gloomfang Mauler, followed by a Disturbing Conversion, Converter Beast, a Shivan Branch Burner, then a Streetwise Negotiator, followed by a Full Art Swamp. Then we're going to see a Fairy Mastermind coming in. Very good hit from the main set in Foil. And right behind that, we're going to see a Transcendent Message. Then we're going to see a Path uh, to the Pyromancer from Commander. And then we're going to see Rayev Master Smith. Very nice in foil. And then our etched is going to be Finn the Fangbearer. Followed by Ayara, Widow of the Realm, coming in. Very nice in a showcase treatment there. With Hirobi, Death's Whale. And a spirit token in the back with a treasure. We got four packs to go. So we're two thirds of the way through the box here. That reminds me of when I uh, pulled the unwinding clock or the uh, foil shattered glass um, transformer. Uh, just, uh, just super nervous to like go see what that card's worth because I have no idea. Uh, so we got a core halibird. We got a cut short. We got a corrupted conviction followed by a Thornwood Falls. Then we're gonna see a Pyretic Prankster with a Halo Forger. And then we're gonna see an Invasion of Kylum with a Full Art Planes. And then we're gonna Fire Main Commando, another Commander card in regular frame coming in. So that's two in this box. And then we're gonna see Rankle and Torbrin coming in in a Showcase with a Sadar, Jabari, and Zalfir Mythic coming in from Commander. With a Valakut Keeper of the Flame. Heck, we'll, we'll just make a pile of him. And then we're going to see Frigia, Judge of Valor. Followed by Dejeru and Hezerit coming in uh, from the Multiverse Legends. With Athalia, Guardian of Thrabian. Also from the Multiverse Legends. With another Phyrexian Incubator in the back. We got ourselves a Serpent Blade Assailant with a Sigiled Sentinel, then a Final Flourish, followed by Burning Sun's Fury, then we get an Aerial Boost, followed by an Artistic Refusal with an Invasion of Amonkhet and a Forest. Then we get an Arc Priest of Shadows coming in as our rare, followed by Thalia 
Uh, and the Gitrog Monster coming as a Mythic. I don't think I've seen that one yet from the set. Oh, that's going to be a showcase. And then we get a Fire uh, Main Commando in Extended Art Non-Foil with Adina Soul Steeper again. So that's two. And we're going to see another Halo Foil here, another Uncommon Yargle Glutton of Urborg. Non-serialized. <laughs> and then we get a Glistening Dawn. Ooh, a double Halo Foil pack. So we're going to see Cezanne, Perverter of Truth, coming in in Halo Foil. Very cool. Um, valued, uh, I think, around $6 in the Halo Foil treatment. Uh, but nice to get two in one pack. I don't think I've seen that before. And then another Phyrexian Incubator. So that's uh, four Halo Foils in here. One rare, uh, two uncommon, and one serialized Mythic from the main set. And... They've got to do something about these packs. This is a little ridiculous. And it's not me. I've opened well over 5,000 packs. I think I know what I'm doing. We got Ral's Reinforcements here, followed by a Stasis Field. Then we get an Arachnoid Adaptation, followed by a Vengeant Earth with an Angelic Intervention. Then we get a Zalfirian Lancer with an Invasion of Dominaria. Full Art Mountain. And we're going to see Galta and Maverin coming in for, as our main set rare. With a Doomscar Warrior in Extended Art Non-Foil. With a Path uh, of the Schemer coming as a Mythic from Commander. Then we're going to see Rada Coalition Warlord in Foil. With a Shana Sisse's Legacy in Etched. And then we've got a Galta and Maverin coming in from the uh, Showcase series. With an Elish Norn Grand Cenobite coming in an etch foil. Uh, so this is going to be another really good hit. Not quite as good as the Jenga Taxes, but valued just over $20. So that is awesome. And then we get another Phyrexian Incubator. All right, final pack to go here. Will we be the first to pull two serialized cards? No. Guarantee the answer is no. Or at least not two in the same box. So we get a Tenured Oil Caster, followed by uh, Searing Barb, Windscarred Crag, Timberland Ancient, Tarkir Dune Shaper, with a Change the Equation. We're going to see an Invasion of Belleron with a Full Art Island. And we get a Sea Double with a Monastery Mentor in Extended Art. Very nice to see that. Good uh, good Mythic. Then we're going to see Brimaz Blight of Oreskos. Mythic coming in from Commander with an Ingarunais in Foil. Ooh, got another Halo here. We are going to see Agar the Freezing Flame in Halo. So that is our, our third uncommon Halo. And then we're going to see an Archpriest of Shadows in Extended Art with a Fire Song and Sunspeaker in the back with a Dinosaur uh, treasure token. All right, so give me just a moment. I'll get everything sorted, organized, and be right back with the MTG box analysis. Today's MTG box analysis is going to start with a review of what we saw in today's box as compared to what we were eligible to obtain inside of a collector booster pack. Then we'll examine set coverage for each of the three sets as well as coverage by rarity. Then we'll review the current set value for each of the three sets and break down the actual observed value for each. Finally, we'll conclude with a summary. If you want to go deeper into the analysis and see all of the metrics for this box, plus more than 100 others, simply join the channel at the Give Me the Data level. Let's get things started by reviewing the contents of this box in comparison to the cards that we were eligible to see. Using this chart, we can see the non-foils we observed from the main set in green, the foils we observed in orange, and the set in gray as the baseline. In the non-foil space, we were only eligible to see showcase, borderless, extended art, and serialized cards. In today's box, we saw four non-foil showcase, nine non-foil extended art cards, and one of the five serialized cards. In the foil space, we saw between 12 and 19 cards for each of the primary colors of magic, plus five foil showcase and six foil extended art cards. In the collector booster packs, the only cards that you're going to see from the Multiverse Legends subset are either going to be the 65 cards in traditional foil, etched foil, halo foil, or if you're really lucky, a serialized double rainbow foil. In today's box, we saw between one and three cards for each of the primary colors of magic in traditional foil, as well as 10 multicolor cards. We also picked up 12 cards in etched foil, as well as four cards in halo foil. 
Unfortunately, we didn't see any of the serialized cards from this subset in today's box. In the Commander subset, you can see 8 traditionally framed cards in foil, plus 54 extended art cards in either foil or non-foil. In today's box, we saw 2 traditionally framed cards in foil, plus 11 non-foil extended art cards. Unlike the previous Collector Booster box, we didn't see any foil extended art Commander cards today. Moving into coverage, from the main set, we saw 14% of the showcase and 24% of the extended art cards in non-foil. This gave us 19% coverage of the cards that we were eligible to pull. And because we did see one of the five serialized cards, we did see 20% coverage. However, because there are 500 of each of the five serialized cards, there are technically 2,500 serialized cards in existence. And since we saw one, our true coverage is 0.04%. In the foil space, we saw 114 of the 360 cards from the main set that we were eligible to pull in foil. This gave us 32% coverage of the set. Our highest coverage among the primary colors of Magic was in white with 43% coverage. From the Multiverse Legends subset, we saw 18% of the etched foils and 6% of the halo foils. In the traditional foil space, we saw 18 of the 65 cards in foil, giving us 28% coverage. And in the Commander subset, we saw 11 of the 54 extended art cards in non-foil for 20% coverage. We also saw 2 of the 8 standard frame cards that we could have pulled for 25% coverage. Pivoting to coverage by rarity, in the non-foil space, we were only eligible to pull rare and mythic cards from the main set. In today's box, we saw 11 rares for 20% coverage and 3 non-foil mythics for 15% coverage. In the traditional foil space, we saw 59 commons, 24 uncommons, as well as 20 rares for 18% coverage and a single foil mythic for 3% coverage. From the Multiverse Legends subset, we saw a combined 12 uncommons in the etched foil and halo foil space for 15% coverage. We also saw 3 rares for 3% coverage and a single mythic for 2% coverage. In the traditional foil space, we saw 50% of the uncommons and 27% of the rares. We didn't see any mythics in traditional foil from the subset today. Finally, in the commander subset, we saw 9 of the 48 rares for 19% coverage and 2 of the 14 mythics in non-foil for 14% coverage. In the traditional foil space, we saw 1 rare and 1 mythic. In total, this box contained 52 rares and 8 mythics from the 3 sets. Before we take a look at the value in today's Collector Booster Box, let's review the value of the cards in each of the sets. This chart shows all the cards from the main March of the Machine set using non-foil market prices as of April 26, 2023. Excluding serialized cards, there are currently 13 cards valued over $10. And here's a look at the 6 that are currently valued over $15. The most valuable cards are going to be the Borderless Ren and Realm Breaker, the Urbrask in Standard Frame, and either the Showcase or Standard Frame, Shieldred or Elish Norn. The set also features 13 cards valued between $5 and $10, and 37 cards valued between $1 and $5. The remaining 297 cards from the main set are currently valued less than $1. If you were to add up the non-foil market prices of all 360 cards, you'd be looking at a grand total of $415.75 in market value. And here's a look at the value that we saw from the main set in non-foil and in serialized. In today's box, we were extremely lucky to pull one of the 2,500 serialized double rainbow foil praetors in existence, which of course was the Jin Kataxis, which is currently valued at $1,700 on TCG Player and has recently sold for as much as $1,750. We also saw one card valued between $5 and $10, and three non-foils valued between $1 and $5. The other non-foils from the main set that we saw are currently valued less than $1. In the traditional foil space, we didn't see any of the big hitters and only a single card valued between $5 and $10. We did pick up 10 foils valued between $1 and $5, but the other 106 foils from the main set that we saw are currently valued less than a buck. Now let's take a look at the value of the Multiverse Legends subset. This chart shows all the cards from the subset that you can pull from a collector booster box using non-foil market prices as of April 26, 2023. Excluding serialized cards, there are currently 28 cards valued above $10 and 3 above $50. The 3 above $50 are going to be the Etched Foil Ragavan Nimble Pilferer valued at $67.59, the Halo Foil Atraxa Praetor's Voice valued at $93.73, and the Halo Foil Ragavan is the most valuable at $168.80. The set also features 22 cards valued between $5 and $10, of which most are going to be in the etch foil and halo foil treatments. There's also 36 cards valued between $1 and $5,
but the remaining 109 cards from the subset are currently valued under a buck. If you were to add up the non-foil market prices of all 195 cards, you'd be looking at a grand total of $1,210.32. And here's a look at the value that we saw from the subset. We picked up one of the 28 cards valued over $10, and it was the Elish Norn Grand Cenobite, which has a current market value of $23.24. We also saw one card valued between $5 and $10, and two cards valued between $1 and $5. The remaining 32 cards from the Multiverse Legends subset that we saw are currently valued less than a dollar. And here's a look at the market value of the 62 cards that you can pull from the Commander subset. Currently, there are no Commander cards valued over $10 that you can pull from a Collector Booster Pack, and only two Extended Art cards valued between $5 and $10. There are 16 cards valued between $1 and $5, but the other 44 are currently valued under $1. If you were to add up the market value of all 62 cards, you'd be looking at a grand total of $61.78. And here's a look at how today's box performed. We pulled one non-foil valued between $5 and $10, three cards valued between $1 and $5, and a mixture of nine foils and non-foils valued less than a buck. So how did this box perform? Well, I purchased this box through a Patreon agreement for $209 even. The current market price for these boxes as of April 26, 2023 is $226.39. So for once, I paid less than market value. Today's Collector Booster Box contained 12 packs, each with 15 cards, allowing us to see a total of 180 cards. The 12 tokens that we saw are currently valued at $5.59. The 13 basic lands have a combined value of $2.72. The 59 commons from the main set are valued at $7.75. The 24 uncommons are currently valued at $7.17. The 31 rares have a current market value of $35.87 and the three mythics that we saw are valued at $14.95. The 36 cards from the Multiverse Legends subset are valued at $39.08, and finally, the 13 commander cards are valued at $13.77. Add it all up, and the grand total for this box comes up to a dismal $126.90 in market value, which is a loss of $82.10, which means that this box only returns 61% of my purchase price and card value. Now, for those of you interested in cards valued just over $2, so the numbers look like this. In total, we saw nine cards valued over two bucks in this box, and they have a current combined value of $68.86, which means that those nine cards represent 54% of the total value. Now, if that was the end of the story, this would be a very sad box. However, as you know, this is not the end. We did also pull number 447 of the serialized Jin Kataxis, which I'm valuing at $1,700 due to those TCG player listings. That means that the new total for this box is $1,874.68, which is a gain of $1,665.68 over my purchase price, and equates to a return of 897% of my purchase price in card value. Thank you so much for watching. I want to take a moment to give a special shout out to all of the channel members. Your support helps fund this operation and allows me to create the content that you all enjoy. If you're not yet a channel member, I invite you to consider becoming one. By joining, you'll gain early access to videos and many other perks. If you're interested in supporting the channel but don't want to become a member, there are several other ways that you can show your support. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue with the channel. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, do something amazing.